Um, so uh, my name is, uh, as you know, so Dr. Gita Yadav. I'm a dermatologist on the east end of the city, and I wanted to talk to you a bit about sunscreen, ultraviolet radiation, and melanoma risk. So I thought to kind of bring it home, though, you know, I know many of you in the audience um, have a personal experience. I wanted to show you what these melanomas did to my patients. So the one on the far left appeared in pregnancy for one of my patients. Um, it was diagnosed when she was pregnant and thankfully wasn't uh, so deep that it required adjuvant therapy that would have definitely complicated her pregnancy and, uh, and still remains something that she has to keep in mind as she... Um, decides to have additional children in her life. The second melanoma here, this is what in transit or um, metastatic melanoma can look like. So these are satellite nodules. So this melanoma recurred. It uh, originated on a patient's face and because it was so difficult to get clear margins um, within a year or two, the melanoma recurred and as these microsatellitoses. This last one killed my patient. Uh, he was diagnosed late. Um, he presented to my clinic uh, when it was already a very obvious uh, melanoma, and I followed him through his re-excision and adjuvant therapy, and um, ultimately the, um, the melanoma metastasized. And so it, it brings home the severity of what we're talking about, and I just thought that was really important to kind of share. Um, so sunscreen is proven to help prevent skin cancer, and I, I wanted to kind of really hone in on this part of prevention. So. Some of the journal articles I have up here are from like 1999, and uh, this has been well-established and well-known for a long time. Uh, sunscreens, uh, in my opinion, are absolutely safe, and they are proven to prevent skin cancer. Um, so here are some facts. So sunlight is a major environmental risk factor for melanoma. Between 89 and 95% of the annual cases of melanoma are caused by solar UV exposure. So that is almost all of them. Uh, sunburn protection matters for all phenotypes as melanoma is seen in all ethnicities. I have a handful of patients with uh, phenotypes, uh, phototypes four, five, and six skin who have had melanomas. And photo protection and sun avoidance may lead to a decrease in vitamin D levels in some individuals, but we don't know what the optimum vitamin D levels are. And so I always tell my patients, don't try to get vitamin D from the sun because it depends on what time of day, how much skin you have exposed, what color your skin is, like take supplements and with diet and that should be sufficient. So there's no real reason to try to say you have to go to the sun to get your vitamin D. Um, and then the fact for me, you know, is that sunscreen is safe. It's been well-established its safety profile um, in countless studies. So um, explaining ultraviolet radiation. So UVA and UVB are often how we think about ultraviolet radiation. And so UVA is believed to be in the action spectrum for melanoma formation. You get about 10 to 20 times more UVA than UVB in sunlight. It's the main cause of photoaging. And so I tell my patients, even if not for the skin cancer protection, even if for vanity's sake, you know, wear sunscreen, you know, it'll prevent wrinkle formation. Uh, UVA can cause increased skin laxity, pigmentation. Um, UVA is not blocked by standard window glass. So when patients tell me that, uh, well, they're not really going out for very long, so they don't have to wear sunscreen every day. It's a reminder that actually, if you're sitting by a window, you can still get UVA. And this is what is used in tanning booths. And the World Health Organization has named um, uh, tanning booths a carcinogen. And so that uh, speaks to what Dr. Carroll was saying earlier about it's like a total no-go, you know, tanning boots. UVB uh, rays are the main cause of sunburn and they're the main cause of basal and squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma formation. Uh, to get a protection against both UVA and UVB, your sunscreen should say that it is broad spectrum. So you should look for that. So when we measure the efficacy of sunscreens, you often think about the UVB protection only because that's something that has a standardized kind of rating. So that's the SPF factor. So what that is really telling you, if you have a sunscreen that's an SPF 50, that you can spend 50 times as much time in the sun with the same amount of redness than if you didn't wear that given product. So it, it's not a sun block. It, you know, these are sunscreens. They do protect about 98% of UV rays if you're talking about an SPF 50, but there's a bunch of things that impact the amount of solar energy your skin gets. That is the solar intensity, so the time of day, uh, time of year, the skin type, the amount of sunscreen that you apply, how often you reapply. 
So uh, thinking about sunscreens, uh, an easy way to kind of think about them is mineral, mineral and chemical. Um, it's not quite as black and white as uh, these two categories would, would um, make you think, but fundamentally chemical sunscreens, um, they basically absorb photons, so energy from the sun before they penetrate the skin and mineral sunscreens provide a bit more of a physical barrier, though they do also absorb some of these photons, but generally thinking, the thinking is, is that they tend to scatter um, the photons before they're absorbed by the skin. So there are common chemical filters and common mineral filters. Um, you know, which one is better? It really is about, again, the best sunscreen in my view is the one that's broad spectrum and the one that you're gonna use every day and at least a minimum of SPF 30. And that number, comes from like the Canadian Derm Association, American Academy of Dermatology. It's um, it's a minimum, but see mineral and chemical sunscreens, they work in different ways. And so many um, sunscreens offer protection in both regards. Uh, generally the mil mineral sunscreens, they, they, are, they tend to be a little bit more uh, gray cast or white cast. So some people find the organic or chemical sunscreens a bit more cosmetically acceptable, especially in different skin phototypes. Um, many sunscreens combine both so that you get a really nice coverage across both UVA and UVB uh, spectrums. The mineral sunscreens, they tend to be a little bit more suitable for sensitive skin as they generally don't cause irritation or allergies. And that's what you see indicated for six months and younger. So um, they're different. Many sunscreens have a blend of both. If you want to find one that is just in either category, you absolutely can, but really it's the one you're going to use. That's the most important one to have. Okay, this is a, a bit of a medical jargon, but I, I really wanted to share this because I think this is a neat graph. So high SPF sunscreens may provide ultraviolet protection above the minimal recommended levels by compensating for lower sunscreen user application amounts. Okay, so this study, what it's really showing you is that if you look at, at let's say this red bar, you know, when you take an SPF 100 and you apply it at two milligrams per centimeter square, that's how much you have to apply uh, to get that coverage that's on the bottle, then you get the adequate protection. However, if you only apply half as much, like one milligram per centimeter square, you're still getting an SPF of about 55. And so um, the thinking in this study was that if as many people don't apply enough sunscreen, an adequate amount, going with a higher SPF number may compensate for the fact that you didn't apply as much as uh, you were supposed to, to get that labeled indication. So um, that is something to kind of keep in mind. You know, sun safety awareness, it may not translate into sun safe behavior. Like 80% of the general population say they wear sunscreen, but only 19% say they wear it daily. Uh, there was a really cute study that came out not long ago looking at uh, patients who put their sunscreen bottle right by their toothpaste, um, kind of their glass with their toothbrush and toothpaste in it. And, they, and, and without even being prompted that those patients wore sunscreen more often than ones who didn't put it right there in an easy, easily accessible location. So it's a good reminder that you can do these things to kind of make sunscreen use a habit. And uh, definitely uh, thinking about it like brushing your teeth every day will hopefully increase your uh, your use of it on a regular basis. Um, sun safety habits for everyday protection include um, practicing good sun safe habits when you're with your family and teaching and showing your kids how to be sun safe, to reapply their sunscreen, to make sure they wear it every day and using different sunscreen formats for different occasions. You can get lotions, sticks, sprays, you know, whatever works or fits into your family lifestyle or your routine, make sure that it's cosmetically acceptable to your family, people who are using it and uh, and make sure that they're covered. You know, uh, there are, is data to show that also even, you know, as much as I wanna say, yes, reapply it every two hours and wear the right amount. I mean, I'd rather people wear it period than not at all. And so even if you can't do that, then having that sunscreen on first thing in the morning will give you some amount of protection hours later. It may not be the same amount, but depending on your activity level, you will get some uh, sustainability of that over time. Um, and then practicing total sun protection habits. So in addition to wearing a high SPF sunscreen, wear protective clothing, you know, and sunglasses and, you know, skip the tanning bed, definitely no tanning bed. Um, so that's sort of what I wanted to talk about. And uh, I appreciate your attention and interest in the topic. It's, uh, it's, it's super important. And I'm, I'm happy we're discussing it as summer approaches.